Good morning, I'm Pastor Gillespie from St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church and School, Sherman Center, Random Lake, Wisconsin. You have joined us for our Congregation of Prayer Guide for Daily Meditation and Prayer around God's Word. It's Thursday, May 20th, 2021. We continue our catechesis through the book of 1 Samuel. We're in chapter 17. Um, one thing to note here, and I mentioned this the other day in another um, kind of way, but we'll mention it here today, is that even reading somewhat familiar stories to us doesn't mean um, that we have all the details. And especially a story, a famous story like David and Goliath, mm, as, as I think we mentioned, maybe it was yesterday or the day before, uh, most of us probably learn that story by way of Sunday school materials or a children's story Bible which are both presented the story in, by way of paraphrase, meaning um, they omitted details, they tried to get the main idea, so to speak. Um, but that's not actually how the scriptures work. It's not about a main idea, well, apart from Christ and him crucified. Um, the, the story actually provides details, and those details often matter. And so when we do our catechesis here, what, what I would suggest is the right way to think about this is not to dummy down God's word uh, for the sake of the of the children, right, in the way of like spiritual milk, I think Paul would say, um, but rather to provide the meat, uh, right, and to train people up into real, um, what? Well, receiving the Bible as it's written, right, the words matter, and um, also then growing to learn to appreciate and to um, receive that word in its, what, authenticity, I suppose is the right word. Right, so rather than dumbing down the story, let's let's let the story stand as it is and as it's given by God the Holy Spirit, um, and bring uh, young and old up to that level. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to note some of the uh, distinctive features of the actual text, not the storybook version that you uh, maybe grew up hearing. All right. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our first verse today is from Revelation chapter 21. Well, this is our memory verse, excuse me. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Revelation 21 verse 4. And our psalm. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let all those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress I called on the Lord, the Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side, I will not fear, what can man do to me? The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All nations surrounded me. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They went out like a fire among thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> oh, that's a wee bit small. Let's make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. All right. We continue uh, with our first reading here is from uh, St. John's first epistle, now in chapter 5. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, 
that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree as one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God that he has testified of his Son. He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his Son. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. That's it. Yeah, there's the end of the reading. John actually, uh, well, the Greek is actually quite simple. It's easy to uh, read in Greek, even with minimal vocabulary. But the argument that John makes in 1 John uh, is actually quite sophisticated, and I think it would be worthy of a more thoroughgoing Bible study, right? Um, but notice, uh, keeping his commandments is not burdensome because we've been born anew of God, right? The new man, that is Christ, that dwells in us by faith, loves God's word because he is God's word and does not find his word burdensome because it's the word that he gives. It's, it's his very nature. It's his very being, Jesus himself, right? And bearing witness to that, of course, is the water and the word and of course, the, the water, I should say, and the blood and the spirit, right? The spirit testifying to the water, baptism into the blood, the supper, right? It's all, it's all quite clear there. And of course, it's connected to John's gospel, and we're out from his side come blood and water as well. And all this is for the sake of faith, believing the testimony, right? Believing and in believing, having life in his name. All right. I could talk more about that at length on another occasion. I wonder if Oh, no, I do have a commentary on First John. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'd have some resource actually to bring to bear as we read, would read it. Okay, our reading for catechesis specifically is from First Samuel, continuing there in chapter 17 now. Now, the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle and were gathered at Sukkot, which belongs to Judah. They encamped between Sukkot and Azekah in Ephes Damim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together, and they encamped in the valley of Elah, and drew up in battle against a battle array against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on a, on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, with a valley between them. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Goth, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze, and he had, a bron had bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels, and a shield-bearer went before him. All right, looks like I'm back now. Don't know what happened there, but we lost connection and it wouldn't reconnect. Uh, go figure. All right, it should be working. All right, where did we leave off here? Um, let's just go back to verse 8. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and you the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. 
But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were um, dismayed and greatly afraid. Now, David was the son of the Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, and who had eight sons. And the man was old, advanced in years in the days of Saul. The three oldest sons of Jesse had gone out to follow Saul uh, to the battle, and the names of the three sons who went to the battle were Eliab the firstborn, next to him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. David was the youngest, and the three oldest followed Saul. But David occasionally went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near and presented himself forty days, morning and evening. Then Jesse said to his son David, Now, or take now for your brothers an ephah of this dried grain and these ten loaves, and run to your brothers at the camp. And carry these ten cheeses to the captain of their thousand, and see how your brothers fare, and bring back news of them. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. All right, there ends uh, the reading. Hopefully you've all been able to jump back on um, after our internet dropout there. Not exactly sure. Every day it's something new, right? (laughs) It doesn't seem that we can consistently do this. Um, from church, although I did get like a full week uh, with no problem last week, or a couple weeks ago maybe. Um, Let me just check one thing and make sure we're in good shape before we keep going. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Okay, no, that's fine. Okay, well, it's probably um, varying in quality, but so it is. Let's go back to the beginning and ask some questions. Okay, where did the Philistines camp? It says at Ephes Damim between Sukho and Azekah, right? Uh, where did Saul and the Israelites camp? What does it say there? Yeah, it says in the Valley of Elah. And who was the Philistine champion, of course? You know this part quite well. Yeah, the Philistine champion um, is... Saul is Saul. All right, it looks like it sent me over onto the cellular connection, which is what I hoped it wouldn't do, but it did because the main connection is bogus. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to do one more thing here before we get too far. Well, we're just going to let it go because I don't, I don't really want to start and stop it one more time. Well, it's not supposed to do that. Okay, um, let's see. Who was the Philistine champion? His name is Goliath, and how tall was he? Goliath was six cubits in a span. That's what it says. Um, and I think the typical interpretation of that is um, close to nine feet tall then. Nine feet tall, which is significant, right? All right. Um, and his armor. What about his armor? Yeah, he has a bronze helmet on his head. He was car- armed with a coat of mail weighing 5,000 shekels of bronze, about 125 pounds, which is a lot. <laughs> uh, bronze armor on his legs, we see that. Uh, he had a bronze javelin between his shoulders. The staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. The iron spearhead weighed about um, 600 shekels. And he had a shield bearer that walked before him, right? So pretty substantially armed. Um, What was wrong with Goliath calling them servants of Saul? You see that there in verse 8. Yeah, they were really servants of God. All right, what's the challenge that Goliath makes? Choose a man to face me, he says, right? If he kills me, we will be your subjects. If I kill him, you will be our subjects. And of course, what was the response of Saul and all the Israelites? Yeah, they were dismayed and terrified. 
Uh, why is David reintroduced now at this point, do you think, verse 12? Well, as we heard, um, was it yesterday? No, two days ago. David was the one anointed, with, and the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. Um, but did anyone know about this? No one but Samuel, of course. And what was David doing at this time? It says uh, he was going about, of course, um, back and forth to Saul and was feeding his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Right. So his position in Saul's court, uh, we wouldn't say was permanent. How long did the Philistine challenge Israel? Uh, that's curious. 40 days, it says, right? Yeah, right there in verse 16, 40 days. What other life in, or events in the life of Jesus were associated with the number 40? Let's see if you can come up with a few. The number 40 in the life of Jesus. Yeah, that would be, um, he was presented in the temple after 40 days, right? He um, was tempted in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights, right? Um, the number of days after his ascension um, is, again, 40 days, so from Easter to ascension. So many examples of 40 there. Um, let's see, what next? Uh, what was David given to take to his brothers and their captain? What does it say there? An ephah of roasted grain, ten loaves of bread, and ten cheeses. Ten cheeses. All right, so that's pretty, pretty exciting. Who doesn't like cheese? All right, very good. Meditation on this text. David came out from Bethlehem, the house of bread, with bread for those who trembled and feared death. So to our Lord, the son of David, has come forth as a child from Bethlehem to bestow the bread of life and to conquer all who would challenge the flock of Israel. Goliath challenged Israel to send a man to face him just as Satan so boastfully challenges the son of Adam. Christ has, be has come as the firstborn of the new creation to face the challenge of the evil foe. He gives to his church the bread of his body, which has been, so to speak, roasted upon the cross. Though Satan challenged our Lord for 40 days, Jesus did not forget the word of his Father. And by the power of his word, our Lord overcame temptation and was rescued, or rescued us, I should say, on the battlefield. All right. All right, we confess our table of duties to employers and supervisors. Masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. Ephesians 6, verse 9. Youth, to youth I should say, young men, in the same way be submissive to those who are older. All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. 1 Peter 5, verses 5 through 6. We pray. Gracious Lord, you have given us great responsibilities and authorities, authority as employers and supervisors of others. Teach us by your grace and mercy to treat our workers and those who are under us with respect, understanding, and compassion. Give us a humble spirit toward them and help us to see our workers as gifts of God who depend upon us for their livelihood and to enable us to be of greater service to others for whom we perform our life's work. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for youth. O Lord, as, in, as you in humility and faith submitted yourself to Mary and Joseph and to every authority instituted among men for our salvation, teach us to submit to our elders and to believe that you will accomplish your good purposes in our lives and in the lives of others through such honor and respect. In your holy name we pray. Amen. On this Thursday, we pray for the church and her pastors, for missionaries, teachers, deaconesses, and other servants of Christ in his church, for the fruitful and salutary use of the blessed sacrament of the Lord's body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. Help us, good Lord, by the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. On this May 20th, we pray in Thanksgiving with Barb, who celebrates her birthday, with Greta, who celebrates her baptism, with Evan and Megan, who rejoice in the gift of holy matrimony. We pray for those who are ill, receiving treatment, or recovering, especially Tristan, Marcella, Jeremy, Kelsey, Amanda, Roy, John, and Timothy, Janice, Sandy, Linda, Ken, and Blair, our homebound, Bev, David, Willis, and Janice, and Mickey, the Missions and Mercy Work of the Church, especially Lutherans for Life, and Sheboygan County Hispanic Outreach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray, O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I don't think we have a commemoration today. Let me make sure. Nope. So we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. All right, we sing our hymn for this week. Uh, We'll just do stanza one uh, since the internet's pretty terrible. All right. Christ is the world's Redeemer, the Lover of the pure, the font of heavenly wisdom, our trust and hope secure. The armor of his soldiers, the Lord of earth and sky, our health while we are living, our life when we shall die. All right, that concludes our congregation of prayer for today, May 20th, 2021. Apologies to those of you who tried to watch it live. Um, it looks like uh, everything kind of tanked on us, including our internet connectivity. So, um, Well, that's how these things go sometimes, is it not? So, uh, Lord be with you all. Keep you safe. Be sure to uh, go and check the uh, Bible study for the book of Hebrews. We had a similar problem last night, so it seems to be something consistent going on um, with our connectivity. I don't know what that is. Um, But you can watch it on replay. It's available both on Facebook and YouTube. Not the the original stream, but uh, a corrected version that has, uh, well, it's posted as one continuous video, so you can go back and watch that. Otherwise, Uh, We'll see you again tomorrow, hopefully, (laughs) streaming. Maybe I'll stream from home tomorrow just to ignore, avoid the problem, all right? And uh, yeah, be with you today. The Lord be with you today, and we'll see you tomorrow.